firstly, thank you for coming down. Uh, I know some of you come from a long way um, to this client share, and um, it, it's, it's good for like us to meet you and talk to you. I'm, I'm especially keen on talking to you guys after, if you can stick around, um, um, just to find, get some feedback and help improve the product even further. Um, but I won't talk for too long, because I know we're running over time, and we really want to be able to show you some of these features that are coming up in the next releases. So afterwards, we'll have some breakout sessions. So I'm going to quickly give you a high-level overview of what's coming up now. Uh, I know Jens has given a, um, you a glimpse of the exciting things that we've got planned in our roadmap, um, but we're just as keen to show you what's, what's going to be ready for you now to, to use. Um, so I'm going to start by, um, I just want to quickly go over the previous release, um, which you're currently on, um, so 802, just because we're not many clients are actually using the, the new feature that Robert kindly um, talked about, the, the web-to-print integration with external <coughs> sources. So that's something that we'll show in the breakout session afterwards. So that was something that came out in the last release, along with workflow annotations and NBC you are using. Um, Aspera, who are a third party, they have an integration where they can send files because they're transferring lo really large files across the globe. Um, they need a quick way of doing it, and Aspera is a way to accelerate those file uploads into Brownworks. Mm -hmm. So that's a that's an addition to Brownworks. Um, so if you want, if that's something, if that's a use case that's useful to your business, then um, definitely speak to Raj or <laughs> or Steve afterwards, and they can discuss um, the commercial implications. Um, but so in terms of 8.1, um, so this is probably what you've all been waiting for. Um, we've got, um, we started to put themes behind our releases now. So um, one of the biggest, um, one of the biggest trends, or I, I should say most requested features in the last year has been integration. So everyone has lots of systems. That's not going to change. It's only going to grow um, because everyone has their own specialty, whether it's um, integrating with your your website, being able to serve your assets into your website, being able to use your assets in social campaigns or in office documents like Christian was showing us earlier. So that's, um, um, that's been a common request for us and lots of integrations have happened over the last year. Most of them have actually been done by the clients themselves using our API. So that's another thing that um, we've been developing a lot over the last year behind these new features. But um, all of that, is kind of in line with the way DAM was intended to be used always as a central hub um, for those systems. And so the, the Brownwork system could be seen as your central location, but that's not very, if you're starting to use your assets outside of Brownworks as well, it's not very useful if you can't bring in information on how that's being used. So one of the key focuses um, for 8.1 release is around the assets. So we wanted to bring the assets at the forefront um, be able to have better visibility on how the assets are being used both within Brandworks and externally as well. Um, our reporting feature was quite old um, and could have and, and is in long need of a refresh. So um, we've basically written it from ground up, um, taken in lots of feedback from um, clients on on the limitations with the current reporting and how we can improve that. And we've come up with these new reporting dashboards, which is one of the features. Um, again, it's been a year or so since we released the new UI, which um, a lot of you are using at the moment. But we've um, one of the things that we've got lots of feedback on was the the full screen pop up, the pop up for the asset details, um, being able to show use more real estate. So we've we redesigned the whole full screen, um, the pop up, which gives you more information. And we've at the same time, because our theme was about asset visibility, we've introduced a new tab called Insights into the asset pop-up so you can actually see the stats on the, on the assets themselves um, and introduce the comment in which we put in the workflow in the last release into the asset, into the dam as well. Uh, and finally, um, we've introduced another section for my stuff um, called my stuff, which is a quick way to see the stuff that you've been working on recently. So it shows you like the, the latest assets or albums and searches. Um, I'll, sh I'll show you some of this stuff afterwards. I'll just run through some of the other small, smaller things in the release. So um, we spent a lot of time working on um, an e-commerce e embed link, um, which is basically a way for you to be able to use your embed your assets within external systems um, but, so, um, and make it more dynamic so you can choose the kind of size of the files and stuff better, maybe use some of those download wizards in that, and then also get the stats from that. Um, so that ties into the reporting. 
Um, lots of people are using Workflow now, so we've, we've surfaced this, uh, a new tab which allows you to see the, the workflow diagram and where you are in a particular workflow stage, and that's all automatic. Um, and then some pagination as well, because we noticed that some, one of the um, blocking points for some people to move onto the DAM UI was if you had a really large folder, um, you, it was difficult. One, it would take a long time to load, um, but also wouldn't be very usable. So we introduced the pagination into the, into the new UI as well. Um, and then some other minor improvements on the searches. So being able to search for templates if you're a web-to-print client. Um, being able to filter asset for disabled assets um, and also making the ability to save searches available to more users. Um, we've, we've, there's some other stuff on, on just adjusting some of the views in the workflow as well because it wasn't always clear when a stage was complete so we've added, added that information um, as per for some feedback. Um, and then going back onto the API, so if, if you have development teams or you know of integrations that you need, the best place to start or to uh, the best reference point is our API docs, which we, we update on a regular basis. So we've got, um, you'll be able to see all the things that are possible now from our API, from browsing assets or downloading them and things like that. Um, in terms of new integrations, these are the ones that are available now. Obviously, we have lots planned and, and Yen showed you that, um, I refer to it as a scary slide with lots of different um, systems that we were planning to integrate with. So these are just two that we've got available now. Um, Christian's obviously showing you the Templify integration and how you can use that in Word and, and PowerPoint and Outlook. And, and I'll, show, I'll give you a quick demo now of the Adobe connector that we have, um, that, um, we're gonna have available now as well. So in terms of next, um, next steps, so in the, um, Jens has given you a vision of the kind of the long-term roadmap over the next year, what we'll be developing. But um, when I say what's next, I mean the immediate things that we need to work on from January um, in Q1 are stuff, um, obviously everyone's getting ready for GDPR compliance. Uh, I don't know, does, has, has anyone heard of GDPR compliance? Uh, yeah, <laughs> as I thought. So it's something that we, we need to comply with, but also it gives us a chance to really focus on making the features around users better. So that's going to be the theme for our next release is making it easy for um, users to see what information they have, um, like the profile could do with some updates, being able to add a profile picture, for example, or being able to download that information that you have on the system. And, and there's a lot of other things that we need to tackle as part of that GDPR exercise. Um, we'll make some SSO improvements at the same time and, and also um, give the admin a bit of a refresh as well um, to make it easier to find, because we're getting more and more features and we try to make everything configurable. We'll, we'll um, improve the admin interface a bit to make it easy, even easier. And then um, we're always gonna improve the search. So one of the big things that um, we wanna add into the next search update is the ability to have like a really quick search. And um, so you don't, so if you already know what you're looking for, um, if you use the quick search bar at the top, um, it will give you some auto suggestions so you can quickly find the tags, have quick hits to assets that come up as you're typing. And we want to make that really fast and, and really easy for you to, to find things that you're, um, reduce the number of clicks to get to your assets basically. Um, and at the same time <coughs> of doing some search improvements, we'll, we'll review um, kind of the facets that you see on the left-hand side of the search um, and maybe add some extra ones like date filtering and also add some more options on the search page. I know there's um, the DAM UI has lots of features to be able to download and things like that, so we'll try and introduce some of those things into the search interface as well um, and more integrations. But, yeah, if you have any questions, um, just... Yeah. When will you be integrating with Adobe Illustrator? It's actually part of this connector as well. So right. the, the connector, this is InDesign. It covers InDesign, Photoshop, and Illustrator. Yeah. So it will be the same plugin and the same extension installed. So that's all oh, yeah. part of this. Saved me a lot of time, I think. That. Yeah. Because all of my files, I create a lot, of, a lot of the print stuff and the web stuff I do in Illustrator. And then I got told I would have to split it down to Photoshop and InDesign. Oh, okay. It's just a huge amount of, of mechanical work, so yeah. having that will, will really help. This will make it easier. It'll be interesting to see some of the work you're doing and, and maybe set up a, a demo site. Or, or So what client are you with? Or? Uh, Flipbang. 
flip that. Okay, yeah. So yeah, we can do some tests with with your demo environment and right. see how that will work. On the note of uh, Cloud, how will that affect links of documents? Like if it's in that way, it affects. Obviously, if you link to the brand name. Yeah. Plugin, obviously, it's only um, illustrating in, um, in the work on links. Yeah. Files. How's the work link on the note? Um, I'll need to double check the technical details on the links. Um, I don't know off the top of my head, but um, what I believe is it, it um, at the time of packaging, it pulls it in, pulls in the links. Um, but I'll need to double check that. Probably answer that. It, it, it's so normal links are to a file server, um, Mac or Windows, and and this plugin enables uh, HTTP links, which is the technical term for web links. So. Um, there's two ways. So, if you're sending it to the printer and you're not packaging it up via the package feature, it will only work if it also has the plugin, because otherwise it can't understand what a hyperlink is because it's actually pulling it in from Brandwood directly. So you can use the package, but if you're if you're sharing it between, uh, and again, I'm not sure what client you're from, but if we imagine that you had a night night shift in India, which some people do for for art working. Um, there's no need to to send the link files because they are quite literally yeah. uh, what well, are cached locally behind the scenes, but end users don't need to worry about that. So you can literally just send the file or indeed upload it to Brandworks, and um, somebody else can open it without having those files locally because you'll just download them as you open the file, um, assuming you have a plugin. <laughs> Does that answer the question? Yeah. Yeah. So what what's what we're going to do now is have a couple of breakout sessions. So it'll be if everyone can, anyone who's staying can um, go across to the other room. I'll lead the way, um, and we'll have four tables. So on one table, I'll I'll give you a live demo of the reporting um, module. Um, on another table, um, it will be led by James and um, Adelso. They'll show you the new full screen pop up um, and the the new stuff there. Um, and in terms of the, we'll have another table which is going to be led by Vanessa and Andreas, and they'll show you the web to print, um, the Greenwich example of the web to print integration. And there'll be another table where Christian will show you the office integration with Templify. And food and drink. And food and drink. So, yeah. <laughs> thank you.